Indian Home Rule by M. K. Gandhi Chapter 19 Machinery Reader When you speak of driving out Western civilization, I suppose you will also say that we want no machinery. Editor By raising this question, you have opened the wound I had received. When I read Mr. Dutt's Economic History of India, I wept. And as I think of it, again my heart sickens. It is machinery that has impoverished India. It is difficult to measure the harm that Manchester has done to us. It is due to Manchester that Indian handicraft has all but disappeared. But I make a mistake. How can Manchester be blamed? We wore Manchester cloth, and that is why Manchester wove it. I was delighted when I read about the bravery of Bengal. There are no cloth mills in that presidency. They were, therefore, able to restore the original hand-weaving occupation. It is true Bengal encourages the mill industry of Bombay. If Bengal had proclaimed a boycott of all machine-made goods, it would have been much better. Machinery has begun to desolate Europe. Ruination is now knocking at the English gates. Machinery is the chief symbol of modern civilization. It represents a great sin. The workers in the mills of Bombay have become slaves. The condition of the women working in the mills is shocking. When there were no mills, these women were not starving. If the machinery craze grows in our country, it will become an unhappy land. It may be considered a heresy, but I am bound to say that it were better for us to send money to Manchester and to use flimsy Manchester cloth than to multiply mills in India. By using Manchester cloth we would only waste our money, but by reproducing Manchester in India we shall keep our money at the price of our blood, because our very moral being will be sapped, and I call in support of my statement the very mill hands as witnesses. And those who have amassed wealth out of factories are not likely to be better than other rich men. It would be folly to assume that an Indian Rockefeller would be better than the American Rockefeller. Impoverished India can become free, but it will be hard for an India, made rich through immorality, to regain its freedom. I fear we will have to admit that moneyed men support British rule. Their interest is bound up with its stability. Money renders a man helpless. The other thing is as harmful as sexual vice. Both are poison. A snake bite is a lesser poison than these two because the former merely destroys the body, but the latter destroys body, mind, and soul. We need not, therefore, be pleased with the prospect of the growth of the mill industry. Reader are the mills then to be closed down? Editor That is difficult. It is no easy task to do away with a thing that is established. We therefore say that the numb beginning of a thing is supreme wisdom. We cannot condemn mill owners, we can but pity them. It would be too much to expect them to give up their mills, but we may implore them not to increase them. If they would be good, they would gradually contract their business. They can establish in thousands of households the ancient and sacred handlooms, and they can buy out the cloth that may be thus woven. Whether the mill owners do this or not, people can cease to use machine-made goods. Reader You have so far spoken about machine-made cloth, but there are innumerable machine-made things. We have either to import them or to introduce machinery into our country. Editor Indeed, our gods even are made in Germany. What need, then, to speak of matches, pins, and glassware? My answer can be only one. What did India do before these articles were introduced? Precisely the same should be done today. As long as we cannot make pins without machinery, so long will we do without them. The tinsel splendor of glassware we will have nothing to do with, and we will make wicks, as of old, with homegrown cotton, and use handmade earthen saucers for lamps. So doing, 
we shall save our eyes and money, and will support Swadeshi, and so shall we attain home rule. It is not to be conceived that all men will do all these things at one time, or that some men will give up all machine-made things at once. But, if the thought is sound, we will always find out what we can give up, and will gradually cease to use this. What few may do, others will copy, and the movement will grow like the coconut of the mathematical problem. What the leaders do, the populace will gladly follow. The matter is neither complicated nor difficult. You and I shall not wait until we can carry others with us. Those will be the losers who will not do it, and those who will not do it, although they can appreciate the truth, will deserve to be called cowards. Reader What then of the tram cars and electricity? Editor This question is now too late. It signifies nothing. If we are to do without the railways, we shall have to do without the tram cars. Machinery is like the snake hole which may contain from one to a hundred snakes. Where there is machinery, there are large cities. And where there are large cities, there are tram cars and railways, and there only does one see electric light. English villages do not boast any of these things. Honest physicians will tell you that, where means of artificial locomotion have increased, the health of the people has suffered. I remember that, when in a European town there was a scarcity of money, the receipts of the tramway company, of the lawyers and of the doctors, went down, and the people were less unhealthy. I cannot recall a single good point in connection with machinery. Books can be written to demonstrate its evils. Reader, is it a good point or a bad one that all you are saying will be printed through machinery? Editor, this is one of those instances which demonstrate that sometimes poison is used to kill poison. This, then, will not be a good point regarding machinery. As it expires, the machinery, as it were, says to us, Beware and avoid me. You will derive no benefit from me and the benefit that may accrue from printing will avail only those who are infected with the machinery craze. Do not therefore forget the main thing. It is necessary to realize that machinery is bad. We shall then be able gradually to do away with it. Nature has not provided any way whereby we may reach a desired goal all of a sudden. If, instead of welcoming machinery as a boon, we would look upon it as an evil, it would ultimately go. You have reached the end of Chapter 19 of Indian Home Rule by M.K. Gandhi. Click on the links at the end of the video to go to the playlist or the next chapter if it's available. If you enjoy the content and would like to support the channel, please like and subscribe.